I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, we're taking a look at the world of rock and roll with Xyland X Band with author Charles Harvey. This riveting story takes us through the dramatic transformation of Joe X. He's a rock and roll guitarist who becomes Mike Smith, a Harvard grad. Join us as we explore the challenges and triumphs of living a double life in the high stakes music industry. We're delighted to have this very talented author join us here today on Spotlight. We thank the team at Bookside Press for helping us put him in the spotlight today. We ask viewers like you to support authors like him by subscribing to our channel and by purchasing his wonderful book. The links are below this interview. Charles, great to see you here today on Spotlight. Uh, it's great to be here, thank you. Tell us what the inspiration was in putting together a complex character like Joe X, rock and roller, who becomes Mike Smith, Harvard grad. Well, I wanted to uh, I wanted to have really a uh, contrast so that, um, you know, Joe X had the, the skills and talent to do his job, but not the enthusiasm or interest. And Mike Smith has the enthusiasm and the interest, but not the skills. And so uh, really it, it um, you know, it, it, it kind of goes to career, you know, finding the right career for mm -hmm. your disposition. I mean, if the, if the book is about something, you know, in its entirety. Absolutely. Is rock and roll something you're familiar with? Are you a rock and roller, a former rock and roller? Tell us a little <laughs> bit about your background and why you chose to write about this. Uh, this well, music. you know, growing up, rock and roll uh, was, I mean, the rock and roll guitarists and musicians were our heroes, me and my friends. And so we, you know, we listened to the radio all the time and we'd hear anecdotes and we trade stories and read magazines and, and learn. We just wanted to learn everything we could about the lives of, of our heroes. And, um, uh, I, you know, I took guitar lessons long enough to know that I was never going to be good at it. <laughs> That's <laughs> okay. So, a lot of rock and roll stars aren't good at it either. So <laughs> it's well, all in the be, style, be. right? But uh, so you were kind of captivated by that world. Like you said, as we all were growing up, you kind of imagine what it's like to have, right. you know, everything that goes along with being a rock and roll star too, right? Uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. And, and you would hear about sort of the tortured geniuses that, you know, they would get to the, you know, they would get to be very famous and, and uh, in the spotlight and then just not be able to handle that lifestyle. Yeah. Absolutely. Give us an overview of the book. Tell us what it's about. Well, um, it starts when, uh, uh, okay, well, I'll start at the beginning. It, yeah. follows, it follows X Band, which is a fictional rock and roll band. The story takes place in 1985. Um, X Band is just finishing up their, the last of their three record contract. And uh, the bad news is that now they need another contract. So it's sort of like, um, you know, if they can't get another contract, then they really stop being viable as a rock and roll band. And... Um, but 1985 is not a good year for them because rap is coming on strong and all the labels are looking for rock and roll, are looking for rap bands and they're not looking for rock and roll bands. So there's really not, they're not, they're not getting any interest really. And so their, their third album is coming out and they, they're really struggling to make it as, as good as they can make it. Um, and then, uh, the, their guitarist has a nervous breakdown and loses his entire memory and starts thinking of himself as Mike Smith, a mm -hmm. completely different personality. And Mike Smith is, um, the theory is that Mike Smith has been fabricated to fit the lifestyle that was destroying Joe X. Mm -hmm. And um, so the, the band, but the, now the band doesn't want to tell anybody that their guitarist can't play guitar. Um, he's really the musical genius that's been driving the band. And so they go through a, a series of, you know, misadventures, I guess, where they, they slug their way through uh, difficult situations. And, and in the end, they have to go on tour. And at that point, Mike Smith uh, really needs to prove that he can, he can, play guitar he's been working on it yeah 
Right. Very, very cool. It has the feeling of a very real story, almost like, you know, um, fic not almost like nonfiction, because uh, these characters feel very real. Have you envisioned this as like a mockumentary or as a film or something? I mean, certainly this is Spinal Tap was huge. <laughs> and there was another one, I forget what it was called. It was about a rock and roll band where the lead singer disappeared. And it was a huge movie back in the 80s as well. But uh, rock and roll movies do quite well. Have you thought about this as a film? Oh, you bet I have. Yeah. That's the dream. Yeah, I would love to see this. And I'd love to hear what somebody comes up with for the soundtrack. Yeah, exactly. That would be amazing to bring it to life. I mean, you've got the uh, tour band poster behind you, which again yeah. adds to the realism of your story, which I think is great. And yeah, exactly. Putting it out there, uh, having your work out there, the character is out there is one thing, but then handing it over to, you know, I don't know, John Bon Jovi or somebody or Bruce Springsteen or maybe a younger artist to put together a soundtrack on this would just be absolutely right. amazing. It'd be great. Uh, I, right? would, I would love to see what somebody comes up with that. You know, some of the songs I describe pretty carefully and some of them I only give a, a, you know, passing reference to. It'd be interesting to see what somebody comes up with. Yeah, absolutely. So Hollywood, if you're listening, here's a great <laughs> book that would make a great script and a collaboration with a great musical artist would be great as well. Um, that's for sure. Is this your first time trying your hand at writing or uh, have you written other books? Well, I've written other other unfinished books. So this is the first one that I've actually managed to get across the end zone, you know, okay. and um, I have other other things that are, you know, partially written, you know, so yes. Is there anything you'd like the uh, audience to take away from this book? Is it basically just, you know, entertainment or is there a message there as well? Well, I think um, I would like for people to think about what career they're in. Um, the, I, I mean, I don't know if you caught this, but the dedication was to all the people that are doing what they're doing because they're good at it and not because they want to yeah. or something like that. It, it was, or, uh, or they're doing things because it pays the bills, not because they want to. Uh, right. And not because, it, yeah, yeah. And so um, I, I would like if, if there was anything to take away Think about where you are and whether it, whether you know how you feel when you get up in the morning. I mean, can you can you stand going to work? And <laughs> and um, I I didn't I, you know I didn't realize this at the time, but it's more autobiographical than I would prefer because I went to engineering school and became an engineer. Meanwhile, taking as many courses as I could in writing and creative writing, and and uh, even as an engineer, writing my you know, writing my books and I've written process procedures that nobody will ever read. And, mm. and uh, here I am writing a book now about somebody who's really in the wrong career for them. Yeah. <clears throat> and so I didn't intend it to be autobiographical, but it, it kind of can be taken that way. Well, I think Thoreau said most men leave, lead lives of quiet discontent. Um, and that's the quote that always stuck with me because most people, you know, do their plan B job, you know what right. I mean? Right. Or they took the course that was more practical or they, you know, thought this paid the bills. I will stay with the corporation. They didn't take that extra step to step outside of their comfort zone and do something that, you know, appealed to the rock and roll star within them. I think whatever your passion is, we all have a rock and roll star within us. And it doesn't <laughs> mean musical, you know what I mean? Right. It could right. be oh, painting, right. it could be right. gardening. Yeah, you're absolutely be, right. Yeah. It's that creative side, which I think that people need to uh, to uh, hone uh, hone into. Tell us a little bit about writing this book. What was it like writing the book? It must have been fun creating this world, right? Well, it was. It was. And what I loved was when there were loose ends, then you put the loose ends together, and they and they make the the entire uh, the entire thing more cohesive. You know, when I was writing it for about two thirds of the rough draft, I was writing it during lunch. So every day I would eat lunch and then I'd get about 20 minutes to, to write on the book. And, um, you know, I'd, I'd make a little progress. Maybe I'd do 200 words or something like that. And then I would have a, another day to think about what I had written and what the next step would be. I knew it was rough draft, but um, 
to do that, I did. So, so I say the book progressed slowly, but steadily. And during that time, I can, I had plenty of time to think about what was coming up and how I was going to, how I was going to tie things together. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing how you can squeeze time, right? That you have 20 <laughs> minutes on your lunch break to write, write, and you get yeah. it all together. I'm sure that in many ways, that was the most enjoyable part of your day though, right? Oh, it was. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I love that. I love that. And as lunch was coming up, I'd be, okay, what am I going to write about today? You know? <laughs> <laughs> wonderful. Wonderful. Well, the name of the book that was spent, uh, written over countless lunches by Charles Harvey, and it's a <laughs> real great rock and roll masterpiece. It's called Xylene X-Band. It's a riveting story that takes us through the dramatic transformation of Joe X, a rock and roll guitarist who becomes Mike Smith, a Harvard grad. It is quite an interesting journey as we explore the ups and downs of the high stakes life in the music industry. Thank you so much for joining me here today on Spotlight, Charles. Thanks for having me, Logan. I really appreciate it. I appreciate your time. And to the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford, thanking you for your time this time. Until next time on Spotlight. <laughs>